Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about for loops and while loops in C++. So, I have my C++ program here. So, a for loop, if you watch my Python video, then you will probably know that a for loop is a piece of code that can repeat an instruction the number of times you specify it should. And a while loop is a piece of instruction that will repeat it until a condition is false. So if the condition is true right now, it will continue doing it. And once it becomes false, it will end the program. It will stop doing it. So how do you make a for loop and while loop in C++? So for a for loop, it is a little more complicated than in, in Python. So in C++, we use the for keyword and then an open bracket. And inside those brackets, you'll need to actually make a variable that checks how many times you did this statement in this for loop. So let's do that. So for open bracket int i equal to zero. Now you can actually specify any variable, but the convention is to use i. So you can use i. The exception is where you have nested for loops, a for loop inside of another one. That is when you need a different variable for each for loop. But let's continue. So for int i equal to zero, i should be less than some number. The number is how many times the for loop will run. Let's set it to five. And then i plus plus. And then outside the brackets, we have curly brackets. So inside these curly brackets is the code that you're going to keep that will run over and over. So let's make it print something five times. So C out, angle brackets, and let's make it print five. Angle brackets, end L. So let's run this program. There you go. It printed the number five, five times. So unlike in Python, in C++, you can actually put any sort of like weird for loop combination. Let's say you started with i equal to negative one. You see that? Instead of like giving an error, it actually just continues printing. But instead of five times, you get six times because the difference between negative one and five, that would be a difference of six. So it prints the statement six times instead of five. Let me just put that back. What if you're doing nested for loops? That is putting a for loop inside of another for loop. Well, it's just the same thing. So inside of the for loop, you put four open brackets, int, and this is the important bit. You have to put a different variable name. If you don't, you'll get a bunch of nasty errors. So don't put the same variable name as another for loop. So we have the main for loop using the variable i. So the nested for loop can use the variable j, for example. So in j equal to zero, j less than five, j plus plus. Let's put the same there. And then curly brackets. And now inside of this for loop, let's print five. Let's print the same statement. So if we run this program, you see that? It printed the number five several times. So it actually printed the number five 25 times because every time this main for loop runs, this inner for loop will run five times. And if the outer for loop runs five times, then that will be five into five equal to 25 times, which means this program will print the number five 25 times. So there isn't really a limit on how many for loops you can keep inside of another for loop. But if you're doing programs where you are required to calculate the answer in uh, some amount of time, I don't recommend using for loops unless it is a brute force problem, then it, that's a different story. So this is for loops. So what about a while loop? 
so for a while loop it's basically like the same syntax as the for loop so while open bracket and here is where you put the condition so it's basically the same as python so while let's say true open bracket there you go so there is one distinction in python when you put the variable i mean sorry the boolean value true you have a capital but in this case you don't in c++ there is no capital you have to be careful because if you put a capital it won't recognize what you mean it will give you an error so make sure to put that distinction so inside the while loop it's basically the same thing just mention whatever you want to run now if i run this program it'll actually run forever because i set it to while true true will always stay true so it will just run forever so let's put an actual condition let's say i have a variable let's label it a so int a equal to zero and let's set it while a is less than five and inside the body of the while loop let's mention that a plus equal to one so every time it runs all the other code it will add one to a so let's run this program there you go it printed the number five five times and ended the reason it ended was because we were always adding a so eventually a equaled five and five is not less than five so the while loop stops so mentioning this variable a plus equal to one this is an important part when you're using while loops sometimes people may forget to mention that and if they do then you'll end up with a uh, loop that never ends because initially a is zero and that's it, it just stays zero and zero is less than five so it will keep running and nothing happens so you will have to increment a otherwise you'll just end up repeating the while loop forever so this increment is important now you can put a while loop inside of a file loop while loop but like the for loop it is a bit of a issue because well it will cause time complexities and all of that and also if there's one problem with one while loop well you'll have to dig through all the while loops because you don't know where is the issue especially with the increment so you can actually put more complex like statements inside of a while loop like say while a is less than five or b greater than four i mean right now it's giving error because b is not defined but you do know what i mean so this is how you use while loop and for loops in c plus plus so thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoyed it thank you